In 2020, I successfully applied to Imperial College London for Mechanical Engineering. In this video, I'm going to discuss my experience and hopefully help you to successfully apply too. My name is Sam, and this is Oxcentric. Just some background, I got an offer from Imperial College London for 2020 entry of Mechanical Engineering at A star A star A, although I didn't actually put them down on my UCAS form as my firm or my insurance. As an introduction to me, I'm from Manchester and come from a UK state school background. If you don't already know Imperial College London, aka Imperial, then one, why are you watching this video? But two, they are a STEM focused institution based in the centre of London with a strong academic reputation. Particularly Imperial is notable for its large international student population compared to other UK universities. Let's get into my experience. Part 1. Pre-interview. At Imperial, the application process varies from subject to subject. Some require an admissions test, some require an interview, some require neither. Before getting invited to interview, I didn't have to sit an admissions test, so at this point I was being judged basically off my UCAS form, which is my personal statement and my grades. My personal statement was written in the Oxbridge style, which meant there was a big focus on study beyond the curriculum. I think this is beneficial as Imperial are an academic institution, so they care about how you've tried to extend your understanding of your subject. I got invited to the admissions day where I had my interview about two weeks before the interview itself. Mine was in mid-December and about one week before I had my Oxford interview. Needless to say, I did a lot of engineering practice that week. After sending off your UCAS form, there's no real set time to be invited to interview as the admissions days continued well into February. However, I sent mine off in mid-October and waited about a month and a half before receiving my interview invite. Do be aware, you'll need to sort out your own transport to and from the interview. In my case, this was a two hour train journey, so as soon as my interview was confirmed, I got this book to make sure I was organized and to help save money. Part two, getting there. As I mentioned, I traveled down from Manchester on the day itself, so I used the train ride to do some I want to study engineering questions to help get me in the zone for the interview. To answer the question, literally everyone asks, yes, I did go to the interview in a suit, though people were dressed more casually than me. Imperial requested smart casual, and I mostly wore a suit just because I'm used to wearing one every day at my sixth form. From my arrival at London Euston, it was a short tube journey to South Kensington, which was the closest stop to the university. Prior to the admissions day, I'd never actually been to Imperial. Now, I know as a rule that's not a good idea because you can only get a real sense of a place by going and visiting, however, I just hadn't had the chance to get to any of the open days. Despite this, I had been to London plenty of times before, so I knew my way around the public transport system, and I was pretty confident finding my way around. Now, if you've never or rarely ever been to London, I'd recommend looking online about how is the easiest way to get to Imperial. When using the tube, you can swipe in and out with a contactless card, which is hassle-free and will save you having to worry about tickets. To add to this, on interviews I was already absolutely hyper from the adrenaline, so I think being unsure where I was going would have added just another unnecessary layer of stress that could have affected my performance. Once I arrived at Imperial, the email they'd sent me beforehand told me where I was meant to be going, and it was quite easy to find the room where I was meant to be. Part 3. The Admissions Day once I got to the room where we were being hosted, there was a bunch of food and nibbles that people could help themselves to. The students were sat at tables with no particular logic, so I just chose a table and sat down. I think this was my least favourite part of the entire process. I'm already a bit awkward with new people, and the tables mostly just ended up in awkward silences with people on their phones. Engineers? Without social skills? Who'd have thought? However, later on I did find some people I talked with a bit more, including some other Oxford applicants. Despite the awkwardness, I would recommend being sociable at the admissions day, as these people may be on your course next year. After everyone had arrived, they did a standard admissions pitch where they talked about what it was like studying at Imperial and gave us some general background about the university. This was followed by a semi-interactive lecture from one of the staff focused on what their engineering research was. There were four main activities and we were broken up into groups to rotate around them. The first activity was a brief tour of the site, which included looking at the mechanical engineering department, a small amount of the student accommodation, and seeing the Queen's Tower, which is probably Imperial's most recognisable building. This was useful and informative, particularly as I hadn't visited Imperial before. The second was a showcase of some of the final year projects of students at Imperial, which included a medical implant that one of the students had made, amongst other things. I can't remember any more exact details, I've, I've, I've slept since then. Come on. Give me some slack. They also did a brief Q&A with some of the undergraduates, which was quite interesting, but nobody thought of any really good questions beforehand, so it could have been more useful. 
I think our third session was quite similar, with students talking about their experiences at Imperial and doing a bit of a Q&A, although without the specific final year focus. The fourth main session at Imperial was the interview itself, which is probably why you're all here. So let's talk about that. Part four, the interview. On my confirmation email for the admissions day, they told me this about the interview. The only part of the visit during which you will be assessed is the 30 minute interview. This may include some maths and physics questions, discussions of the topics you have mentioned in your personal statement, and exploration of your interest in mechanical engineering. I think my interview wasn't quite that long, I recall it being about 20 to 25 minutes. We started off with some questioning on my personal statement. I imagine this is by far the most personalised element of an interview, so for future applicants this will probably vary quite a lot. In my personal statement I discussed a lot about roller coasters and my passion for them, so this probably did shape which questions I got in my interview. I was asked about some of the forces which act on a roller coaster. In response I talked about weight, friction and a few of the forces that act on the riders, like vertical g-force. I was also asked about which direction the human body can take the most g-force, which is in fact the ice forward direction, because vertically and laterally you have a thing called a spine that's not a great fan of large g-forces. Following this we moved on to more standard questions. I had to sketch three graphs which were sine x, arc sine x and one over sine x. I also had to differentiate these functions. Finally I was given a physical problem to solve. This involved being given a whiteboard rubber, a ruler and a book much like this one and I was then told to calculate the coefficient of friction between the book and the rubber. Now I'm not going to spoil the answer here, I think this is quite a nice question, however I may put some hints in the description for those of you who are going to try this at home. The tutor was friendly and helped me in the problems by guiding me towards the solutions if I was going in the wrong way. For example on the textbook problem I was originally talking about equipment that I couldn't use so this obviously wasn't going to be the right solution. Definitely don't worry about the interviewer being hostile or trying to catch you out. They're here to guide you, not grill you. After my interview finished, I went back up to the meeting room where it all concluded. Part 5. My opinion. I left the interview feeling quite happy with how it had gone, and several of the other applicants I spoke to were also quite happy with how theirs had. Whilst this is just one perspective, I felt that the Imperial interviews were quite balanced. The interview tested knowledge of what I discussed on my personal statement and aimed to see how I would approach an unfamiliar problem. In many ways it was quite similar to my Oxford interviews, except with only one interviewer instead of two, and slightly easier problems. Overall my three main pieces of advice would be to do practice questions, develop your ability to talk through a problem, and revise your personal statement. As usual, my two main go-to resolve recommendations for engineering interviews are the website iwanttostudyengineering.org and the book Professor Povey's Perplexing Problems. If you have an Imperial interview coming up, I would be prepared but I wouldn't stress too much about it. As long as you are willing to give the questions a go, passionate about your subject, and engage with the tutors, then you should have no problems at all. Part 6. The End After the activities were done, everyone was free to go. I had a bit of time to spend before my train, so I went and got some food. I only wish I'd had a little more time to explore the Christmas celebrations in London. Although I don't think I'll be back soon, Imperial did make a good impression on me, so I'd encourage you to apply. Hence that concludes my perspective on the admissions process and interviews for mechanical engineering at Imperial College London. If you're considering applying for this subject at Imperial, then I hope this helps you out, and best of luck. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content.